Hi guys, let's talk about a HFT interview problem which was based on multi-threading and asked in an quant interview. So the question is simple that you have to write a program which takes three command line inputs. The first input is a string, the second input is a number of characters or a character count which is integer and third is the number of threads which is again integer. Okay, then each thread will then each thread should start printing the characters of the string sequentially in the following format. So example is this that uh, here you are going like the way you will be executing your program. Let's say you have a my printer executable. Okay, the name of your executable or the name of your binary is my printer. So when you're going to run it, it will accept three command line inputs as given in the equation. The three command line inputs is that first is the string a b c d f g h i j it can be any string a sample input is that the string is a b c d f g h i j then a character count which is three in this case and the number of threads which are four now these four threads will execute and print the characters of this string how would these print the characters like the sample output is given here first the thread one will start executing it will print the first three characters which are a b c then thread two will start executing it will print the next three characters which are d e f then thread three will start print executing it will print the next three characters which are g h i then thread four will start printing and it will print the next three characters so like uh, the next character is j and after that the string is we have reached the end of the string so we'll start again from the first position that is we'll roll back to the first position so j a b then again thread one will pick up like when all the threads are done we start like th threads will also roll back to executing from to start executing from the first thread then after thread four thread one will again start executing thread four finished at the character b so thread one will pick up from the next character which is c and will print the next three characters which is c d e then again thread two will print next three which are f f g h and then thread three i j and so on like it will keep on going so how we can solve this problem i mean there are many ways to solve this particular problem but i am going to talk about the most efficient solution which i think is also lock free and starvation free and also involves like good synchronization practice so as you can see here that uh, there are basically we are giving some n number of threads in a sample input there were four and we need some kind of synchronization between these threads like one thread will execute it will do some work the next thread has to pick up from the point where the thread one left and will it will again do some work which is and that work here is actually printing the characters of the string and so on so how we can basically induce synchronization between uh, in this particular workflow so there are many ways i am going to talk about using atomics or before uh, thinking about using what c++ construct basically using a log free, writing a log free program or using atomics or anything let's see how we can solve this particular i mean what should be our thought process so let's say what we can do is that we need a global index variable which will tell that from which position of the string now a particular thread has to start printing the characters okay and we already have the count of the characters which is given as an input like how many characters a string has to print okay so let's say that is count this index is going to indicate the position from which we will start a thread will pick up and print up print the character so initially this would be zero then count in our sample input was three and then they are like number of threads are four so let's say the num threads are four now what you can think about is that you can think that each thread has a turn like you can say that the or like the thread first has the position or the turn one thread two has the position in the qs second then thread three has four then thread four has four okay thread three has three and thread four has four so let's say there is a turn variable which indicates that whose turn like which particular thread turn it is now to print the characters so initially this turn will be one that uh, it is like when we will start the program the, for, the thread which will start executing is the first thread so that's why we are saying that the turn will be one and thread one will start printing the characters from this index and it will print these three characters so in our case the string was the string which we had to print was e f a b c d e f g h i d e f g h i and j so thread one will start executing it will print the first three characters okay and it will also keep on incrementing the thread sorry index like first index was zero then one then two after printing these three characters the index would be three okay and now thread one will set the turn as two when it has it is done executing it will set the turn as two that it now it is the turn of the second thread now thread two will pick up and it will print the next three characters okay which are d e f like it will see that from where it has to print the characters which is the index that is the third position it will print the next three characters thread two will print these d e f and it will also increment the index accordingly so index will become now six i think and 
it will also increment the turn that now it is the turn of thread 3 now thread 3 will pick up and it will print the next three characters it will increment the index and it will now say that now it is the fourth thread's turn okay so this is how we are going to i mean this is how we can basically induce the synchronization between them like whenever it is a it is the turn of a particular thread it will execute and after it is done executing it will set the turn to the next thread and in each thread like the code of each thread would be something like this that when let's say we can have a, a global variable like the global variable here is turn so what it can do that while each thread will keep on spinning in a while loop like while my turn is not is equal to turn it will like keep spinning here but it is saying that a thread is stuck until it's his turn to execute or it's until it's his turn to print the characters like here we'll print the characters and you can say print cares of string from index you can say that print count cares of string from index and then set the turn as the next turn should be set as my turn plus one mod by num threads okay so this is how the code of each particular thread would look like and this is the code of you can say each particular thread these three statements or these three comp major components you can say what is happening is that every thread is stuck in this while loop until it's his turn to execute when it's his turn to execute it will print the characters it will set the next the turn this particular turn as the turn of the next thread so that the next thread can now pick up and it will again like start spinning here like there will be another while loop here because each thread has to spin indefinitely infinitely okay so this is how each turns each thread's code would look like and you can say that this is how we you, we will induce synchronization and now this turn is a shared variable because this is a global variable like turn is a shared variable this index is also a shared variable so we have to make these i mean we have to have some kind of you know we need to make sure that there is no data race in these variables because these are shared variables because these will be shared by all the threads so we can have mutexes to protect these critical sections or we can also have std atomics like std atomics make sure that each you can say whenever you have an std atomic of some type t any operation which will happen on this particular variable will be of will be atomic i mean and it would be you can say race free there will be no race when any read or write is going to happen on it so we can use std atomic for that purpose so if i show you the code how the code is going to look like it is like this i already have the code written so this is the main function which basically takes command i mean each main function in c++ takes two arguments which is the count of the command line arguments and the command line arguments itself so as we know that the question said that there are going to be three command line arguments right these three command line inputs so i have a check here that if we also have to make sure that we are doing all kind of error handling so if the command line arguments is less than you can if it is less than four then we print an error so why this is four because the first argument it's always is the name of the executable or the name of the binary so in case we have three input command line arguments and one would be the name of the executable itself and if you say here that what i'm trying to say is that these are actually four command line arguments first argument is always the name of the executable or the binary then they are these three input arguments so that's why i'm checking it against four so if the number of if if argc or the command line arguments less than four we print error otherwise the first command line argument is our string the second command line argument is the count of the character which each thread needs to print so here i am actually converting this this argv2 which has the count of the characters into a number and the function which i am using is std from cares so std from cares was introduced in c17 to convert strings into integers or into basically numbers of any base i mean it can be a base 10 number it can be base 2 number so these are very generic functions and these are very fast i recommend these to use in to use in like in c17 from c17 onwards i mean these are very fast and we use it all the time in production code as well so here i have actually converted the number of counts which were received as in the command line argument as string to this care count integer 
then i check if the number of if the char count is 0 then basically each string does not has to do any work so we just exit here otherwise we accept the thread count the thread count is the third command line argument or you can say the fourth command line argument we are converting this we received the thread count as string we are converting it into integer and if there was some any error during you know string to integer conversion we are also printing the error and basically ex exiting from the code or the program and if thread count is zero then also we are printing the error so all sort of error handling is also there in this code then what i have done is that i have created these four threads i mean any number of threads which will be received we have to create that many threads so i have basically created them and stored in this vector and so if you have watched my previous multi threading videos so i have already explained how std thread works in c++ like std thread constructor accepts a functor like a callable object and that callable can any can be anything a function pointer a uh, a functor or maybe a lambda function so here when i am constructing a thread and uh, basically placing it into the vector or am pushing back into the vector i am passing the function which each thread has to run because each thread has to run some one function right where it will be where it will have the code to print the integers now how does the function of each thread looks like like this is the function which each thread will execute you can see here that we have a global index variable and we have the thread turn variable which is going to indicate that whose turn it is now to execute which particular thread turn is now to print the characters of the string okay now what i am doing is that i am spinning indefinitely like each thread will spin indefinitely in a while loop while loop and then each thread will check whether it is his turn to execute okay so that's what i am checking here that if the thread turn if it is not equal to my turn we we don't do anything i mean we don't try to print the character so that's why we will we will be stuck in this while loop until it is our turn to print the characters now here i am using this thread turn is atomic so i am using the load function of the std atomic to basically read the value of thread turn and this thread turn it is global it will be shared by all sorts of all the threads so std atomic make sure that make sure that there is no data race okay and this load the argument which i am part passing to it is std memory order require so you also you know there is no need to pass this argument but for getting the maximum efficiency i am passing it the std memory order require and i am not going to explain what this memory orders or memory model of the c++ is i mean there are a lot of great talks on youtube mm -hmm. and a lot of research papers around it so you can read about it but this i have done for maximum efficiency purposes i mean you can also remove it and it is it will compile the code will compile okay now if it is my turn then i will print this thread my this thread turn because if you see the input was ex output was expected in this way like each thread will print it its count or basically its index and then it will print the character so that's what this cout statement is doing then we see what is the current index okay from this current index we'll print the the char count variables this char count was received as a function parameter of this print cares okay and this char count is same this 3 only okay i have passed this from the main function and i will print that many characters here i am doing the see out of that and as you know that if we have exhausted the string or if the we are at the end of the string we need to start again from the zeroth index so this is taking care of that and then we print a new line and then we set the current index as the new index i mean whatever index is now from which the next thread should start printing and we set the next turn as well like now it is the turn of the next thread which is my turn plus 1 and if let's say we were at the last thread that is at th in this case the thread 4 then we need to start from thread 0 so that's what we are doing here this check is taking care of that and then eventually we are updating this uh this thread turn go global variable okay so the way i am updating this is using this store and i am setting this next turn in it okay this is equivalent to writing this that this thread turn you can also write this as this but i have used the stored api store api because i wanted to pass it the memory order to use and again this memory order is passed for maximum efficiency purposes okay because whenever we are using writing a log free program like this is what you can call a log free program there are no mutexes or locks to prevent critical to basically prevent access to critical sections or you know to prevent data races i'm 
वी आर यूजिंग एस टी डी अटोमिक सो विद एस टी डी अटोमिक्स मैंने वर यू आर डूइंग लॉक फी प्रोग्रामिंग यू शूड ट्राई टू राइट एज एफिशेंट कोड एज पॉसिबल सो डेट्स वाई आई एम यूजिंग दीज मेमरी ऑर्डर थिंग्स ओके इवेंचुअली दिस इज लाइक द कम्प्लीट कोड एंड आई ऑलरेडी हैव एन आउटपुट जनरेटेड फॉर दिस आई थिंक माई लिनक्स मशीन इज अ बिट स्लो बट एनी वेज द थिंग इज डैट इफ यूल कंपाइल दिस पर्टिकुलर कोड एंड इफ यूल कंपाइल दिस कोड एंड रन इट लाइक दिस लाइक द नेम ऑफ द एग्जीक्यूटेबल एंड दीज कमांड लाइन आर्ग्यूमेंट्स इट विल प्रिंट दी एक्सपेक्टेड आउटपुट आई वॉन्ट टू शो यू गाइज द आउटपुट बट आई थिंक माई लिनक्स मशीन इज नॉट वर्किंग बट एनी वेज आई थिंक दिस वॉज मोस्टली विच आई हैड फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो थैंक यू गाइज फॉर वॉचिंग प्लीज डू नॉट फॉर गेट टू लाइक सब्सक्राइब एंड कॉमेंट एंड प्लीज डू कमेंट आई मीन इफ यू वॉन्ट मोर मल्टी थ्रेडिंग वीडियोज और इफ यू वॉन्ट एनी वीडियोज ऑन सम अदर सम अदर टॉपिक Uh yeah I think that was all I had thanks